city with a constantly changing skyline and an expanding future. A resort city, an industrial hub, and a distribution center for the southeast. Each year brings new industries, new buildings, and new citizens. Jacksonville is the seat of Duval County, where you can walk the streets with confidence and a feeling of security, because although you seldom give it any conscious thought, you know there is law and order here. The man responsible for maintaining this law and order is your sheriff. He and his organization are constantly on the alert to protect our citizens and their children in an area covering over 800 square miles. Here is the Duval County Courthouse where your sheriff makes his headquarters. Let's go inside and get a first-hand look at your sheriff's office in action. This is Rex Sweat, your sheriff, who has served you since 1933 and is one of the best-known law enforcement officers in the South. You can feel free to bring your problem into his office and know you will receive prompt, courteous attention. This is true of all of his departments. The Civil, Criminal, Road Patrol, Identification Bureau, the Jail, and the Courts. In a county as large as Duval, the Sheriff doesn't have things too easy. His responsibilities are tremendous, since now the population has increased to over 370,000 people. When Duval County was created in 1822, the sheriff was appointed executive officer of all the courts. Most of the visitors are channeled through this office. There is never a dull moment for Robert L. Bohan, chief deputy. He's the number two man in the office and that means he must direct the activities in the absence of the sheriff. Taking care of a visitor is Slocum Ball, the administrative deputy. This crowded room might well be called the hub of the sheriff's office. Now let's take a hurried look at the accounting and bookkeeping department. Because the operation of the sheriff's office is really big business, Nearly a half a million dollars comes through here every year. The organization is self-sustaining. When you telephone the sheriff's office, you first get the operator at the switchboard. She makes sure that you're connected with the person who can best serve you. There are times when the switchboard lights up like a Christmas tree. This is the civil department, and the most frequent visitors are the lawyers who have witnessed subpoenas or summons they want to serve to get a new lawsuit started. When he wins the case, the lawyer often returns to get the help of the sheriff in collecting the judgment. Here too is the place where the civil deputies report each morning for assignment. Just about every type of legal writ or process must be handled. Witnesses served and jurors summoned, about 300 of them every week. These deputies cover the whole of Duval County, which is over 800 square miles. Frequently, the deputies have to refer to a map to find exactly where they are going. They get a ready assist from Bill Whitehead, the execution's deputy when needed. The deputy's assignment might take him anywhere within the area shown on this map of Duval County. Such places as Dinsmore, Baldwin, Bayard, Jacksonville Beach, Mayport, Talbot Island, or Tasonia. You have seen one side of your sheriff's office in action. Now let's take a look at another. The one that makes the headlines, the criminal department. These deputies start out on a day's assignment. These criminal deputies patrol the business and residential areas outside the city limits. It's their duty to investigate all crimes in Duval County. Because of the large number of colored citizens, your sheriff has found that colored deputies can give them better protection and has employed several in his organization. When the crime of murder is committed, criminal deputies are soon on the scene, as well as the Identification Bureau, 
to make photographs and check for fingerprints, footprints, and tire tracks. It's important that the utmost care be taken in assembling all evidence. If not done properly, it will be of no value in court. Often the sheriff will take a personal hand in the investigation. He confers here with Gene Griffin, chief criminal deputy on the case. Mr. Griffin is specially trained by the FBI in this type of work. Thousands of prisoners land in the county jail, another responsibility of the sheriff. Here they're relieved of their personal effects and properly docketed. Charges may run the gamut from petty larceny to murder. The identification bureau is then notified of their presence in the jail. of these specially trained experts in the identification bureau to make fingerprints of every person docketed. These prints are checked against those on file, and if the prisoner is not a repeater, the identification bureau classifies the new card. Two cards of fingerprints are made, one for the sheriff's files and the other to be sent to the FBI in Washington. is operating the lie detector machine, which determines if a suspect is telling the truth by recording his blood pressure, respiratory, and skin reactions when asked a question. This valuable piece of equipment is the only one in the state and has proved to be 82% accurate. It has been used successfully in over 1,100 cases. Part of the criminal department and road patrol is the dispatcher's office. Here is located the sheriff's own shortwave radio station, which is connected by teletype service with other Florida counties. In this way, the deputies are kept up to date on everything going on in the criminal world, a powerful weapon aimed at crime. Because of insufficient space, the dispatcher must share his room with some of the files on stolen automobiles and accidents. Of all the men in your sheriff's organization, you perhaps are most familiar with the county patrolman. It could be because of his natty uniform, but more important, it should be because he is the first line of defense against law violations. Periodically, Sheriff Sweat and Chief Traffic Officer J.T. Lowe inspect the patrol, which now numbers four sergeants, 76 traffic officers, three dispatchers, and a clerk. For 24 hours every day, these men patrol the county highways, approximately 1,000 miles long, to investigate all traffic accidents and enforce the state's traffic laws. Sheriff Sweat has a warm spot in his heart for the road patrol because it was he himself who organized it some 30 years ago and served as its first chief traffic officer. Since the road patrolman is usually the first officer in the scene of a crime, he is required to pass a rigid training course conducted with the aid of the FBI and other law enforcement bodies. Sergeant Johnson explains the reaction brake test. A gun attached to the bumpers is loaded with two cartridges which shoot a yellow dye on the pavement when discharged by a string. The driver is told that when he hears the shot, to react as though a child had darted in front of his car, to take his foot off the accelerator and apply it as quickly as he can and as hard as possible on the brake. That fires the second shot. Each shot leaves a yellow stain on the road. This car was going 60 miles an hour. When measurements were made, it was found that the distance between stains was 66 feet 
and it was another 264 feet before the car was stopped. A good lesson, and maybe a life saved. The patrolman also must learn first aid. In fact, he is required to become an expert at it. And because the patrolmen have learned how to treat injured persons, it has often meant the difference between life and death. There are a lot of other things a road patrolman must know, too. Here we see a patrolman being taught how to make a cast of plaster of Paris in order to lift tire tracks. The expert from the Identification Bureau is usually called on to do this. But occasions arise sometimes when the patrolman has to act on his own and doing it may mean a case will be solved. The same thing is true of fingerprints. The patrolman learns how to search to find latent prints. Marks a suspect may have unwittingly left to the scene of a crime. It's all part of a day's work for the men who have been taught how to fight crime in the modern way. him directly to the dispatcher. He in turn radios the nearest patrol car, bringing criminal deputies to the filling station. seconds the patrol car is at the scene. The patrolman gets a description of the hold-up van in the car for the dispatcher. All cars in the area are alerted and a description is broadcast. criminal deputies arrive. While the patrolman renders first aid to the man, they take charge of the investigation. Then they put the criminal department in action for the apprehension of the suspect. Criminal deputies are now patrolling the highways. The car is spotted.
together as a highly trained team, road patrolmen, the dispatcher and criminal department deputies have successfully handled another case. And because of this quick and efficient action by your sheriff's office, Duval County is a safer and better place to live.